everyone this is ajay sethi here uh, welcome to another episode of unicorn chases at curate you know this is one of the best part of my jobs as i always say talking to the best operators best founders best investors out there and getting to know what makes them tick what you know learnings they've had in their career and how it really transcends the level of normalcy that you know other people aspire for right what have they done that actually takes them to the next level uh um, and this podcast is coming to you at three location one is at our obviously our content community which is for revenue professionals over 70000 folks already if you haven't joined if you're seeing this on social media go ahead and join it it's the one place for careers upskilling and obviously create engagement with amazing peers or you're seeing this on our newsletter right which is today has about 1600 founders investors operators listening in and tons and tons of cross cultural and cross synergies being formed or you're seeing it on our social media channels on linkedin or on social media thanks for all the love that we're seeing on linkedin we just crossed 140000 followers on both our properties combined which is just amazing for us uh, and we didn't have to spend a cent in marketing all thanks to what you guys have been you know pushing us uh the kind of content love that we have seen is amazing right uh today we have someone on the podcast and i'll not do the mistake that i never intend to do is introduce my guest myself uh because i know i'll fall short in introducing them we have mehak from huddle uh mehak welcome to unicorn chases at curate uh, would love to get an introduction then let's dive deep into what you've been doing thank you so much for having me uh, you know before coming here and uh, from last two days when from the time we were having conversations i actually went on and i saw the other people have come on on this podcast and i think you invited people and largely you know people who are who are founders themselves 2x or 3x founders or founder unicorn founders or even founders have gone on to raise their own you know uh, funds funds today so they're gps themselves but uh, i come from a slightly different side of the spectrum so i like to call myself as someone who is and that's what at least i'd like to believe is someone who's like a support system in an organization uh, i am somebody who would be a go to person in an organization so maybe not being on the front end at all times but handling that linkage between the front end and the back end so i work with huddle i i lead their portfolio and investor relations uh, been part of huddle uh, for almost a, for almost a year now we're an early <coughs> stage venture capital fund largely investing in pre seed and seed stage companies uh, so i i take care of their investor relations so largely you know i i'm somebody who's been entrusted with overseeing the entire spectrum of fund operations here so right from you know managing conversations with the founders on the fundraising side to of course managing relationships with existing stakeholders on board Makes um sense. that's that's one area i look at uh, i'm also somebody as and you know as one of the founders son and likes to define my role is that i'm somebody who bridges the gap between all the other parties that are involved at huddle uh, so whether it's you know creating a linkage between our investors and our portfolio companies or creating a linkage between the different partners we have on board in the portfolio companies so basically that that person who's who's the go to for a portfolio who's the go to for an investor the founders or the team so that's that's how i i'd like to define my role at huddle um prior to huddle i was working for a fundraising platform uh, nice. that's where my, i got introduced to the whole vc ecosystem uh, it was it was a fun ai matchmaking fundraising platform i joined marky uh, to start and you know co-lead their fund placement division initially you know they were they were someone who were raising capital for startups but eventually we they started the vc side uh, when i and you know, my other mentor and, and uh, boss back then joined the division so when i left marky we were at a clientele of about 45 odd clients 45 vcs largely north america focused so those silicon valley folks raising nice. lots of you know 50 million dollar funds we were helping them raise capital from family offices and institutions across the globe amazing uh and that's how you know i got introduced to this site um if i go a little slightly before that i i was in canada like i was telling you uh, previously i was there for my post graduation largely i went there to explore the country um and to see if i can make a future of myself there and in a in a time period of one year and really thanks to covid i shouldn't be saying this but thanks to covid i realized that uh it's not something where i you know where i see my future where i see building myself i want to move back to my country and i think that's the mindset i always had so the first opportunity i got which was a good one at marky i took it and i moved back to india so nice. within the startup and the vc ecosystem if i talk about it i've spent good 3 years of course the time period isn't long but i'd like yeah. to call it you know a short and a good good experience for now 
Nice, super yeah. amazing, right? Um, and you know this side of the whole business, right? So VC, uh, obviously VCs are a you know much hallowed sort of right. That seems uh, because you assume the role of a judge, so it becomes very 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 hallowed as a profession. Absolutely. Everyone wants to buy for it. Uh, even in IIMs where I come from, right, or even otherwise, right, uh, entering into VC is sort of hallowed. Yeah. Uh, you've seen the other side of it, right? Uh, and you see obviously how in your previous role as well and today at Huddle that how do obviously funds raise their money and how do you manage Correct. the other of, set of stakeholders, right? Correct. Yeah. How's that very different? And, and I know it's a hidden side of the VC world. Uh, yeah. and, and you know, and I was talking to my dad the other day uh, and we were talking about VCs, right? Uh, uh, and then he was, I was telling him that, you know, people give millions to startups to actually start up and do stuff. Yeah. And then you're like, who gives them money? <laughs> right? yeah. who's, who's, who's the other end of it, right? And why don't they invest directly? Uh, who's, who's handling that money, right? Uh, so, and how do they come on board? He said, Is there, there's going to be a bigger team that does that, right? I'm, I said, I'm sure there's going to be a team of smart people who manage that end of the business right. as well, right? right? So walk us through that, right? How did that journey come about? And uh, what does that journey truly look like? So, well, you know, like you rightly said, um, the VC ecosystem, of course, is extremely glorified and that's rightly because, uh, because on the investment side, when, you know, you're evaluating companies on a daily basis, you're talking to startups day in and day out, uh, you come in a position of power because, of course, that's, that's where the VC ecosystem currently is. So, when you're talking to a startup, you're talking to them in a position of power where they need your money and when you enter a room in a meeting with them, you know that you, you're somebody who will be asking more questions on the table than answering them. Cut to you know the the other side of this the other side of the table where on investor relations side on the fundraising side um, not just me but you know all the GPs out there they they face this is that where is that money coming from right mm -hmm. so we're we're not putting in our money of course the GP capital is there on the table but Absolutely. the large chunk of money comes from high net worth individuals mm -hmm. and family offices and these institutions who are entrusting us with their money mm -hmm. and they're not doing it in good faith they're not mm -hmm. doing it because they know us or there is a reference of course those are areas which which help but there is there is a track record that's backing us there is a um, certain level of founder conviction which we see in other startups is something that we have to portray to these vcs makes sense so one and of course once you raise money that is when the real journey starts so you know people always think that the struggle is till the time you're raising capital that that has its own struggle but the real struggle from where I come from and what I have seen really kicks in when you start deploying that capital, right? And you, you have the money on board, you've done your closes, you know, you've reached your final close stage and now Makes you sense. have, let's say, 100, 200 CR or 500 CR to manage and equal number of investors to manage on board. And the kind, of, the kind of questions they ask on a daily basis because everybody wants to know what their, what their mm -hmm. money is tracking today, what the companies are doing, what are, your, what are going to be our write-offs and why are these write-offs. And today, the difference I feel, and you know, uh, of course, in a span of three years from where I was in helping these people raise money to today working for a VC, I feel on the investor side, what has really changed is that nobody, and you know, almost like almost there would be five percent of ten percent of people who would be like, okay, we'd like to be passive investors, and we will only look for updates, and you know, just mm. just few numbers you tell us here and there, and it, it solves the purpose. But largely people now want to become operators. So people okay. want to, and I'm not saying they want to, you know, interfere in the day-to-day -day operations or they want to take the founder's seat, no. But they want to be operators in the sense that people reach out to me, investors reach out to me saying that, is there any portfolio we can help with? Hmm. Or portfolio re company reaches out to us saying that we have few LP asks, right? So we need Makes help sense. from the LPs. Because we're, we're young GPs, we're a team of, on an average, we're, you know, um, the average age within the team is 28 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel that the kind of experience that, the kind of, uh, you know, expertise that our investors bring on the table as mentors, as advisors, or just as operators in these companies is something which is very, very valuable. That goes even beyond the value of the money they put in. So today, even the newer conversations that I'm doing, the new people that I'm talking to, they just have one question how much level of involvement will you, you know, do you see us having in the business? And nice. if the answer to that is that we want you on board as operators, we want you to participate in the new companies we're, you know, uh, evaluating on the DD process, or even just generally, you know, bringing deals to us where we can co-invest together, then that is like a win-win situation. So that, nice. that I feel has evolved over the years. Interesting, interesting. You know, I was about to come to that, right? Uh, so 
you know, I think coming and investing in VCs, uh, and I don't know how GPs at uh, you know LPs at that end operate. Yeah. Uh, but in, from 2021 to now, right? Within two years, the whole scenario has changed. Uh, 2021, I think everyone was throwing money at uh, you know obviously VCs, and VCs were throwing money at startups because of the zero percent interest regime, right? Yeah. Uh, and then obviously, has everything has changed, and as you said, and rightly that now. Even anyone who want, wants to come on board wants to come on, come on board with higher involvement, right? Correct. Uh, how do you see that for the uh, you know for the Indian ecosystem overall? I think there is that growing level of uh, ownership uh, right there from VCs to startup owners to LPs, right? Uh, that you know there's obviously this is someone else's money, Correct. Uh, right? And you have to be more careful with it, Absolutely. right? Uh, you just can't throw it at every shiny thing that comes your way and maybe it's going to be the unicorn tomorrow, of tomorrow, right? You'll have to wait it out. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there is this growing cautiousness. It's come with ownership. Uh, do you think it's just a knee-jerk reaction to what's happened uh, and it's going to go back to the party days very soon? Uh, or is it like a change for the better where the system is seeing like a level of shift in maturity? Uh, where the LPs want to become more involved, uh, the GPs are more, you know, thought through in terms of how they see deals or how deeply they want to become involved with startups, right? right, right. And how startup uh, founders are behaving, right? Do you think it's just a knee-jerk reaction that let's stay low till the weather till, till the weather clears, right? Or is it like a defined change in how things work? Well, I, I feel the latter. I think uh, it's a change and it's a change for good. Uh, of course, in terms of you know, if you talk to me um, outside of uh, outside of this discussion, when I'm actually sitting in fundraising and reaching out to people and mm. talking to them, it has become, I would say, five x more difficult uh, mm. to get that first meeting, to get that okay. first conversation, and also to convince somebody to give you their money. Mm. Um, largely, I feel as an early stage investor and as you know, an early stage VC the large market conditions have not impacted us that much because we enter very early in these companies where our expectations are very low and risk mm. and returns are very very high so the the ecosystem in general has not affected us as an investor uh, ourselves as a vc investor ourselves but when it when it comes to you know uh, talking to hnis talking to family offices the way the kind of conversations they're doing that has evolved so much that has changed so much that um, they they all want to understand the nuances and the intricacies of w what all companies are you looking at. Initially, you know, people never even ask these questions of what sectors or what thesis define you know define your mm. fund. Mm. But today, that has evolved. People want to be more sector specific. Mm. You know, they they like if you're agnostic, then you know they feel like how where will we be able to um, help? So Makes if sense. I if I reach out to an HNI, like for instance, I was having a conversation with someone yesterday. And that, that person has, of course, of course, a lot of money uh, right now to deploy and they're actively looking to deploy across funds. But he himself comes from a tech background. So he's been an engineer all his life. He was in India, moved to US. He's, he's here for a couple of days. So just exploring which all funds should I put my money in. Mm -hmm. And he told me that, you know, Mehek, I'll be very honest with you. I'd, I'd rather pick like a tech focused fund versus a sector agnostic fund or something where I can contribute. Mm. So I understand the psyche that this person comes from Makes because sense. tomorrow if we're evaluating a company, he wouldn't want to not be a part of that conversation. Makes and that sense. is what we do today. Like even at Huddle, um, you know, I, I make sure that, you know, and even the team, largely the investment team makes sure that we're, we're talking to our mentors on a daily, on a daily basis. So, you know, if, if somebody comes from a finance background and we're evaluating a company in that sector, we need to reach out to them and, you know, get their expertise, get their, you know, pick their brains on, on what they are thinking about this deal and Makes vice sense. versa. And if they have any deal on the table, they bring it to Huddle and they tell us that, you know, I'm putting money as a sole investor, but I think you should also evaluate it. And we take those conversations very, very seriously. Makes sense. But I think a couple of years ago when, you know, before COVID hit us, maybe the situation was different because that time when, even when I started working for Marquee, um, when, when the market conditions, and I think this was before, even, even before June last year, I remember I was in Canada and, and suddenly the kind of conversations I was having, they were, it was very different. I, you know, I mm. went to my bosses, I told them that people are just now being very, like, they're being very, um, in terms of number centric, you know, they're being very particular about what we're doing and they're not really okay with, with the model that we're currently running. They want us to make changes. But prior to that, it was easier. The mm -hmm. conversations were better and easier. But I think now the change is for good because if we are taking someone's money and that's how we evaluate a company. Makes so sense. if your founder is getting into a room with us and having a conversation, 
we gauge the mindset of the founder and if the mindset is that i just need your money mm. then you know you you take a back step in the conversation but if you know that more than money they're looking for us to you know participate because they're very very early they want our expertise on the table they want they want you know they run through our portfolio they know that we've done this for good hmm. they have done proper due diligence on us rather than us doing on them and that's when they're sitting here with us asking for our money i think that is something which is more interesting for us interesting. and so same goes for you know the people who are giving us the money interesting um, and and to the point that you mentioned right uh, initially that you know conversations have gotten harder and obviously you have to convince folks and then there are folks who now taking 10 things into consideration before they even invest right it's not just about the returns anymore exactly. it's about it's about how involved they want to be in the end stages when you are actually bringing a firm on board for investment yeah. right yeah. um and you obviously for a living as you said you also pitch right to obviously these uh, family offices funds and otherwise right. uh and that's something that you know uh, i think there are founders out there revenue professionals out there who love to know uh what are your personal hacks for pitching that have worked on a general level right something that for you that uh, that says that whenever i do this in a pitch it works right uh, and obviously not hurdle specific right. uh, but something as a personal framework that works for you that whenever i've taken this approach or i've reached out in this way or i've gone to the right spot right what's that secret mantra that works right because founders on the other end are pitching to some like you or mm-hmm. other funds right yeah. uh, and everyone likes to know a meta framework right what works what clicks when i have to pitch to pitch to someone right walk us through that what is really uh, what has really worked for me over the years is establishing a personal connect with the person i'm pitching to so i started off in a business which was very very cold calling driven which was very very uh, blasting out emails and linkedin messages driven and that's what i did for initial years at marquee you know we were we were reaching out to people and of course it was very scripted and uh, without really understanding who is receiving on receiving it on the other end we just kept on reaching out to people that approach works very well when you're doing it in bulks right mm-hmm. when you're reaching out to let's say 150 or 200 people in a single day of course there's there is a 10% 15 yeah. you know 15% engagement rate you get on those but today i feel that when i'm doing this for a full fledged vc and when i'm talking to people having conversation that personal touch is extremely important Makes so if sense. somebody um you know and how you can do that is you know just just like a small like a small tip is when you when you go to, go on to someone's linkedin you see there are few few mutual connections right you try to find what who could be the potential people who could connect you to this person and Makes that sense. personal angle is what you take in when you when you approach these people um sanil who's the founder of hartle told me something very nice and he said that you know even when you create a list even when you have like a list of 50 people that you want to reach out to who absolutely have no connection with hartle or the founders you just go on their linkedin profiles just see the kind of work they've done the sectors they've invested in and reach out to them with a very very personal touch mm-hmm. so when somebody is reading a message it doesn't come to them like a like an automated sort of a thing that's going out to 10 other people or 20 other people out there Makes so i can uh, possibly give them a name give them mm. a name of somebody who is very well known in the industry Got and it. maybe say that you know uh, uh, i bumped into this person at an event we were talking about you and that that's how the name came up because of course Makes somebody sense. has mutuals and there are very few mutuals so they get to know that you know people know you know it's a small ecosystem people yeah. know each other so when you give them a name which is very well known in the ecosystem even if let's say tomorrow they don't know that person but they still tend to they mm. will go and check that person profile out you will create that curiosity in the mind of the receiver Makes and they end back responding to you so these are the few things i think personal touch and uh, creating that curiosity in the mind of the re- person who's receiving your message or email or you know just just a ping on whatsapp that that really helps and the other thing that that's helped is um, and something you know i was i was chatting the other day with one of our other founders is what do you think is an roi of going to events you know mm. what what is the roi because that's one of the key areas that i look at at huddle and after a point i just started feeling that i really need to i need really need to go to this event only if i think i'll yeah. be i'll get some good connects here and I'll, those absolutely. connects will lead to meetings absolutely and and that works you need to enter with that mindset you can't just go there thinking you know theek hai i'll go there mm. and chill for a bit i'll talk to people makes sense then then you'd step out having just like you know business cards in your wallet and numbers of people that you yeah. would would never call never or say never call yeah absolutely so when you enter it with a mindset even when you send that first message to somebody which is very very personalized just reduce the quantity maybe just send it to 10 people a day you will see that the percentage of response would gradually increase Makes so that that is something that's worked for me super awesome 
you know this is obviously a com- coming out to be a very very interesting conversation and uh, this is something that i uh, hold myself very privileged for that i get to interact with some amazing professionals and all the insights that i get right are as different as chalk and cheese uh, if i go to someone else and ask the same question right i'll get a very different response uh, for example i i was literally talking to a founder the other day uh, where they mentioned that you know what's their approach to making money uh so they said whenever i have to go to raise ajay it's very different i so he's lifted millions of dollars right he is a series f founder wow. uh have has been there for a decade this is a second startup so he said i literally set up a call center so he said i literally had three people saying that you know this is the automated thing this is the mailer this is sort of the data room this is what uh, goes at the packet this is the first deck to be sent out he said i had four smart iim guys when we were raising our series e uh and that guy just sending out messages in bulk and whatever meeting came through i would go there warm them with my warm them with my charm my data and everything and if it converted it didn't convert i would walk out saying what's what's the next meeting right what what does my calendar look like very different approach right because he right. said i literally treated it as like a day to day activity i had to, i had to do because beyond a while he said doing personalization stuff working for me so it took a different route right so it's always interesting to see what's worked on one side doesn't work on the other side right right, uh, right? and it's absolutely depend on the operator who's doing it so always amazing to do it uh, and again right this podcast is coming to you on our newsletter on our revenue community on our social media channels today we have mehek from huddle over and some amazing ins- and some amazing insights coming over let's let me repeat what the curate mission is i had to do because beyond the wise it's about really redefining what revenue roles and careers in them look like uh, it's one spectrum of the whole workforce that's been overlooked and we are here to change that right from defining better careers for them better upskilling for them better engagement for them and beyond that as well very very soon uh, for example we are coming up with something very very interesting you'll find the link of that in the revenue community on the limited period sign up which is what we are doing is that if you are someone who's been affected by layoffs we are partnering with a major insurance provider and doing something of a first of the sorts in india where we are doing a insurance against job loss uh, so if you are someone who's been affected by that for a very limited amount uh, you get to actually have two months of salary in your account whenever you're laid off for a specific set of reasons and you get assistance on the platform to find your next job that's coming to the first 1000 people uh, we have some initial amazing interest for it we are reopening it up Uh, but in a better avatar so that's coming up something amazing like this will always always keep coming up on the community so stay tuned join scholars.curate.in and be there we'll get back to the conversation right so make the point that you just mentioned right the last bit i'll, I'll double click on that mm-hmm. uh, a lot of founders uh know i meet uh, even if their business requires it or doesn't uh networking is seen as something that you're always supposed to do as a founder uh people tell you it's good for business it's good for pr uh it could it's good for fundraising right uh and i see these founders who are who have raised money they haven't raised money bootstrap all sorts of them right uh literally going all out for uh you know networking being the face of the brand all of that is taught to founders a lot right yes. uh do you think it's overvalued undervalued what's the right way to go about it uh is it something that not not every founder needs to do what's your view on that right because i understand that as a part of your job that's one of the biggest requirements right and that's what's also talk to founders today that you need to go out there be at every industry event talk to every industry spoke right yeah. but is there a limit to it is there a right way to do go about it uh, how do you sort of fit that as a strategy into your, what you're doing in every especially every portfolio that we're backing there always there always two founders one who's out there and you know networking and talking to people and then there's always another founder who's probably a cto or taking care of the back end so not very active out there not mm. known in the ecosystem but i feel that um, it's it's not something which is which is overvalued today uh, networking is extremely important and why i say that because that's that's one area that i largely look at and when i'm when i'm constantly speaking to my portfolio founders or you know i'm speaking to operators just generally wherever i go uh, people who have been able to build a good brand for themselves they have always had founders who've been 
who's been out there, who've been talking to people, uh, who've been attending webinars, you know, doing meetings, doing conferences, just going on events in general and talking to people. Makes I think sense. talking to people also just cutting through a conversation or entering a room where you see hundreds of faces, but yet let's say you do not know anyone, uh, you do not recognize a single face, but just making a conversation and staying there for three to four hours and stepping out of it, making good connects is something which is a founder, should be a founder mindset, I believe. Makes sense. Makes uh, sense. Like for, for our fund, both our founders are somebody, you know, Sunil is someone who would, would be out and out there and, um, you know, is, similarly for Ishan, their mindset is that we have to, at least one representative of Huddle, whether it's the two of them or whether it's me, we need to be out there. So people really need to keep hearing about you. There needs mm. to be some talk in the room about you or with you so that when you leave a room, people know that, okay, your presence was was felt there. And that will only happen when you go and interact with few people, right? So even today, if, if I talk about our portfolio brands, uh, you know, there, there are people like Samir who's come on your, come on your podcast. There are people, the founders of Perfora. The, the reason why they've been able to build that brand is because I keep bumping to them in every event I go mm. to. They don't, you know, sometimes you feel that I don't have to do this anymore. Maybe I've built a brand for myself. Mm. Now I'm, I'm, I have a good uh, customer base, you know, my revenues are coming in and everything. I should just take a back seat. But that's that's not what's happening. They're always, Makes they're sense. always interested in new conversations, talking to new people because the beauty of this side is that you never know which connect will actually yeah. help you. You know, so today if I am talking to somebody, you know, I met someone when I when I joined Huddle at an, an event in an initial, uh, very initial days and today that person is an LP with us. Oh, nice. So, I, I'm not saying it's easier and just having conversations really helped uh, getting money out of, the, out of pocket of that person, but that does help. So, they, they remember who you are, then you of course introduce them to the bigger players in the ecosystem. You introduce them to your founders, you show them your track record, you show them what you've done, where you stand today. But till the time you do not take that initial plunge and you go out there and you believe in the power of networking, I feel all the other things are a good to have, but someone who can drive those conversations on the on the front end, that is a must have for every founder out there. Makes sense, makes sense, right? And, and when you speak, obviously, when you say right, obviously that someone has to be the face of the brand and actually go out there and, and you know, really talk about what the brand is doing, what their initial uh, presence in the room is doing, right? Yeah. Uh, and how do you sort of balance that route, right? How do you put a metric to networking? Uh, right, I've talked to a lot of founders uh, who are very smart folks uh, and the reason they back off after a while, they're like, there's no metric to put to this, right? Because yeah. sometimes, as you said, the advantage will not make itself apparent immediately. Uh, someone who you met 10 months ago might convert, obviously, uh, you know, like a year later into something that you want to do. Yeah. He said, it's very difficult. So I met a very smart SaaS founder. He said, I've stopped going to these SaaS networking events because I literally can't put a metric to this. Uh, and if I am as a founder, let's say questioning my whole team on metrics, uh, there's obviously nobody questioning me. Uh, but when I think of my role and put a metric to my sort of performance, then sometimes in a month I'm like, I met 80 people some of them were potential uh, you know investors some of them are potential customers some of them are potential partners but nothing's materialized as of yet it's just six six sort of you know conversations out of the 80 that are materialized then he says it becomes very difficult for me to quantify whether i'm doing the right thing right yeah. and it takes time to do it yeah. uh, how do you define is there a framework where you can define a metric to networking and how do you do it that's something that I am also still figuring out and something that I struggle with and hence you know the question popped my mind a couple of months ago where I just randomly asked my founder I said you know what is what is the return on these events that I'm doing you know ultimately um, you need to get something out of it is why your presence is, is required in the in the room I feel defining uh, at least for me what has worked is defining metrics on a long term uh, like for example in a month I attended let's say five events, had met 80 people, had eight conversations, five of them are now interested in talking to me, two conversions. I think if you actually define it like that, it will it will seem like it's not a fruitful activity. It will seem like that, you know, it's something which is I'd rather just sit in my room and do two hundred calls and then then you know get those get connects to twenty people, which will Makes be sense. higher than me attending an event. But there's a lot that you do at an event. You're not just converting people. You're not just con having conversations with people. You're putting a name out of out for yourself in that in that room. Um, that's one. So for, for what works for me is short short goals, like short metrics that I put. So if I'm entering one event today, I know that this is an event I'm going to. 
I'll probably see who the speakers are. I'll probably see who the who's organized the mixer. So what kind of people to expect in the room? Makes so whether sense. it's a founder mixer sort of a thing, or whether it's like a startup founder doing something, and then basis that I just give myself a metric. I tell I tell myself that not a lot, like not un realistic expectations like today I'm going to speak to 10 people because I know that doesn't happen once you start mm. having a conversation with somebody it like takes 15-20 minutes yeah. of your time so I, I just define myself uh, I just give myself small metrics that if I'm entering a room I'll speak to let's say at least four people so four good conversations I need to get out of this room so when I leave the room I need to have maybe numbers or LinkedIn's or business cards of four people who I can leverage tomorrow, not just from an investor standpoint, but also, you know, as operators, as mentors, as advisors. So people that I think in any which ways be a value add to my mm. organization, I'm just going to, you know, have four. So I'll have 10 conversations, but out of those four needs to be people who remember me the next day. And when I reach out to them over WhatsApp or, or LinkedIn message, I get that response and I get that meeting from them. So defining small metrics really helps, but if you see, it as something as an activity over a period of a month or over a period of a quarter then of course then that's something I also need to figure out and I feel like if if somebody cracks that code nothing like it but you can't really put there are things that you do in a business that you can't put number to I think these are, this is one of those things where you cannot define it in numbers Makes and sense. Uh, I know this industry works in a, in a number centric way but I also yeah. feel that um, there are a lot of things that you do for your brand which can never be defined in numbers these are intangible things, non-quantifiable things and you need to still keep doing it so that the business keeps running. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Awesome, right? So uh, guys, uh, obviously this part, this conversation is not just a one-time conversation that I'm having with Mehek. It has deeper partnership undertones to it already. So Huddle obviously, uh, you know, obviously uh, as Mehek mentioned, they invest at the pre-seed and seed stage. Uh, they have a ton of amazing firms who are doing some amazing stuff across sectors. They're partnering with Curate. Uh, so very soon, if you're a founder who's already associated with Huddle, you'll see something amazing coming up in the next week or so, where you'll be able to say that if I need a revenue professional, I can log into the community and get those. If I need to transform my existing revenue team, I can get in touch with the curate team and we'll, we'll set it up for you. If in addition, you're also a, a founder who's looking for investments, as, as a lot of you always are, uh, then, you know, the next question is just that. What does a founder need to do if they need to raise money from Huddle, right? How do they reach out to you? Let's start with that. Um, I think there are a lot of things, a lot of, uh, a lot of numbers that I will not get into today, but I think that's something when you have a conversation with the founders and the investment team, uh, they will, for them to ask. But what we look at largely as an organization and what we believe in, I'll just probably state a couple of those. Uh, the first thing that is very, very important that we keep talking about whenever we step out of a founder meeting is the mindset of the founder and the vision of the founder. Makes I sense. think even today, when we're doubling down on companies which are part of our portfolio, we always say that we as a company, we as you know, an organization and investor really believe in the vision of this founder and the way he's thinking, it's, he's been able to articulate it very well in words. So just by just, you know, what's going on in someone's head, you can't really make out whether you'd like to go ahead or not with this particular investment. But the way they're putting it on paper, the, uh, you know, putting it on a roadmap for you, that's something that's really interesting. So like I, you know, like I mentioned to you previously, the mindset of the founder is very important. If I'm having a new conversation with somebody and the only mindset that I feel this person has is to raise money from me, but not see me as a contributor or what I bring on the table. That, that purely means that they probably haven't done enough due diligence on us and they probably wouldn't know where to fit huddle in the in the you know uh, their ecosystem of investors because we're early operators we participate in a zero to one journey of a founder we want to have that say in a company we want to participate and help a company grow so of course mindset and vision is one uh, the second thing I feel is what is really important and has worked for us is the kind of experience and the kind of track record the founder has built for himself. So when you actually get into the details of the founder, you know, business is something that comes later, but the one who's building it is, is, is something which is very important to us. What kind of track record that person comes from? What kind of experience and expertise does, do they bring on the table? What research have they done on the market and how close are they to the problem that they're solving? Most of the founders today that we have, when you actually speak to them, they will tell you that in their early years uh, of some, even starting something like this, at a very ideation stage, 
they felt this problem themselves and that's why they're solving it so what are they solving for is is more important than how are they solving it and of course both these things go parallel um i think the third thing would largely be of course the product or the the service let's say that they that they're bringing on the table that they're pitching for Makes sense. um what is what is the uniqueness of that product what is the differentiation of that product what exactly is the scalability of that product and you know uh, how are they how are they seeing themselves placed in the market which market are they catering to uh, how big or small is that market and uh, where do they see themselves uh, growing i think that that is something which is which is very very important to us um then of course comes you know the financials uh, the the and that's something for you know the the investment team really looks into it but uh, what are the financial statements what is the revenue strategy what is the monetization uh, plan that they have on board i think all of those things are something which is very important at the stage that we enter um, so yeah largely largely these things and of course then comes the team uh that they have right from the founding team who are the founders who are the operators who are running the business so important people who will run this business whether it's somebody who's heading the product side or heading the tech side who are these people what backgrounds do they come from it helps you know uh, sometimes i feel it helps if you're a pedigree founder um uh, and and if you have had an experience before Makes but sense. also the team uh under you what is let's say the churn rate of that team you know uh, how quickly you're building or reducing your team what is the experience of the people who are working with you what are their roles how are you defining the each and every roles and um, how are you growing that so all of these things i think are are largely important awesome awesome right so if you are a founder who's looking to raise from hurdle obviously you know uh, just rewind and listen to all of this in, in in slow motion so that you note down every point and make sure you covered all texts and when you're pitching to hurdle right uh, and obviously if some someone has to reach out to you right how do they do that as a founder yes as a founder i think that the multiple areas that we uh, we track and you know we we look at if you can reach out directly to me uh, i mean i'm somebody who is very very active i my response rate honestly in the company is the quickest so i'll get back to you asap i'll put you in touch with the right person within huddle we have we have experts we have invest um, you know avps and the investment team where each and every person is dedicated to a particular sector and they're building their own thesis in that sector uh so i'll connect you with the right person or directly the founders they're also very approachable anybody who knows uh, ishan and sanil they know that how approachable they are as as you know huddle founders but yeah they can they can reach out to me my email is always added on my linkedin account that's there uh, we have a specific email address dedicated to all the inbound that we get from founders yes. and that's not something which just sits there and you know the team does not evaluate um on a daily basis we get tons of inbound like you know approximately and on an average 20 to 25 emails with pitch decks and founders reaching out to us and the team actually takes out the time and they've dedicated time slots in the day when they take out the time to open and go through each and every nice. uh, you know deck and of course we have an internal group where we discuss it and best is if you can come through you know somebody who already who can back you up already right mm. so if you find a connection in the ecosystem where you know that uh, there is a, a portfolio founder that we have or you know we're working with so many operators out there we have something called the huddle access which is which okay. is uh, we've built something where we're working with multiple founders who are in the ecosystem who are people who you know will bring in you know the best ex you know best best deals to us out there so you can always reach Makes out sense. to such operators because these people come from an operator or founder mindset so if they believe in you we know our initial job is done right Makes and sense. then and then it becomes easier for us to have a conversation with the founder so yeah i think i think these are largely the areas uh, and and lastly i would again say that um do not do not discount the fact that you can speak to somebody or have a conversation with somebody over a pla- over a linkedin or an email platform you know i think even if you're not able to establish a direct connect with with the vcs even if you reach out to them you send them 10 emails a day you keep following up every 7 day every 15 day i do that i do that for uh, for us and ultimately if what you're building is great you will get a response out of them amazing so, amazing right yeah. uh coming to your journey right i'll ask a few simple quick fire questions right what's your one uh biggest regret uh, in building this out right that you know this i did this wrong i should have done it better wow <laughs> um 
I did this wrong. I should have done this better. I think I I keep asking this question myself almost every second day. Makes sense. Uh, but largely, I feel I feel just um, maybe in terms of so I I personally am someone who really believes in the power of building things on my own. So and I I'm not saying I come from a founder mindset. I think I'm, I'm you know. Uh, nowhere close to that mindset at this point in time like if you ask me you have any idea you'd like to you know build a company i'd say uh, no tons of ideas but nothing that i i think mm. I, I can can scale probably in my head but i feel like i i i'm really somebody who want to build processes who want to streamline things and i think i have not been you know not somebody who've been able to um, maybe move very quickly towards that uh, multiple things you know multiple things that stop you sometimes uh, even I have this I have as on a personal front and I'm I'm sort of working on this uh, for myself is what if this doesn't this fails you know what if this doesn't work what Makes will sense. people think what will people say uh, what will my leadership say what will the people who are working under me or around me say I think that is something I really want to get out of my system and uh, I'm working towards it but I feel like till the time that doesn't get out of my system I'll not be able to move quickly on what what I want to achieve today uh I, all of us feel that way right you know today uh, when i was entering this room i was thinking what if i end up saying something where it it's just i'm just all over the place and it makes no sense or what if hmm. uh you know i i don't end up saying anything words don't even come out of my mouth because i'm just too scared for this podcast hmm. since i'm doing it for the first time uh i think that that fail that feeling of failure um is something i'm struggling with even today and i've i've tried to work on it i've overcome it uh, all these years but um yeah that that is something that i I I regret uh, I I think I regret not doing things quickly because that fear of getting bashed or or fail for things is, is something that I'm scared of. Nice. So yeah, just being just putting my heart out there I guess. Makes sense. And what's that one thing which you did right in your journey at Huddle or uh, earlier right where you finally realized that you know kuch to ho hi jayega like mere I we can pull things off. I can pull yeah. things off right? I yeah. I've talked to founders where they say sometimes the smallest things make them feel yaar हाँ कर लेंगे यार बना लेंगे सो वन ऑफ द फाउंडर्स आई वॉज टॉकिंग टू ही वॉज टेलिंग मी दैट यू नो वी हेड लॉस्ट ऑल होप ही वॉज पिचिंग अ सैस प्रोडक्ट ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड ही वॉज टॉकिंग टू यू नो द फर्स्ट टेन फिफ्टीन कस्टमर्स एंड ही वॉज सेलिंग टू सुपर एंटरप्राइज सॉर्ट ऑफ कस्टमर्स राइट तो कस्टमर बेस वॉज वेरी स्मॉल इट्स द टॉप टू हंड्रेड कंपनीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड राइट एंड यू इज नॉट इवन लैंडिंग वन इट वॉज वन ईयर इन टू द बिजनेस इट बिल्ट आउट अ प्रोडक्ट एंड टर्न ऑफ कस्टमाइजेशन एंड देन ही सेट he had lost faith with whether he could pitch well or not right and he yeah. was one of the best guys i knew right. uh, he said i was then coming from a flight from san francisco to ncr back after like another failed fundraising attempt right uh, he said i met someone from uh, facebook on the plane uh, and that guy talked to me for 3 4 hours uh, and uh, a week later we converted that deal yeah. uh, and he said this is just that flight I knew we could build this out, so I came back and called my founder and I said, "Yeah, कर लेंगे यार, बना लेंगे. अगर ये कर सकते हैं, if we can convert someone in three four hours on a flight, so we can convert customers. Otherwise, maybe it's just the timing is wrong or we are pitching it wrong or whatever. But otherwise, we're not bad. कर लेंगे figure out, right? What was that moment for you when you realized, हाँ यार, कर लेंगे life. Maybe we'll 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 get this cracked. I think, um, of course, you know. i'm not promoting external validation but when you start getting that when you start getting validation from other people around you who especially people who have spent good quality time in this in this industry you know people who uh, who are at the age of let's say 40 plus or 50 plus when they talk to you and you're very new in the industry as probably a 23 or a 24 year old girl who's figuring things out for herself um when you get that external validation um, that is when you know that okay you are on the right path what i also feel is very important is the day you feel you're able to express what you're thinking um very correctly and almost exactly the same way without any filter to the other person without thinking whether my thoughts should be extremely diplomatic or whether whether it's an interview whether it's a pitch whether it's just a general conversation and you're sitting in a meeting room you're talking to people i think the less filters you put in your conversation and the more comfortable you get with your thoughts coming to you know your tongue and it coming uh, to to live and you know people hearing about it that has really worked for me okay. um 
initially i tried to be slightly you know diplomatic where and that's you know i was young people told me that be very mindful of what you're saying we see ecosystem is uh, it's it's an ecosystem of vultures you know people mm. will eat you up and you're very new in this industry and um, you know you just have to be very diplomatic just make sure you're saying the right thing to the right person mm. don't mess it up and i did that initially it, i couldn't last it couldn't last for long like two three conversations and i was exhausted mentally like even though i was having a 10 minute conversation with somebody i was exhausted like i was thinking that i was so much in my head rather than outside my head so i think the day you get comfortable with your thoughts and you know you start putting less filters being less diplomatic and saying it exactly how you feel because you know you what you're saying is right at the back of your head you're not just blabbing things out Makes i sense. think that is something that's really worked for me and then that that's what got me external validation from people uh, external validation from people who did not even let's say end up hiring me but they said if given an opportunity we'd love to but let's say you do not have that kind of experience currently or maybe you know we'll we'll talk to you later but we really enjoyed our conversation so if somebody gives even one hour of their time to me i know that they're getting some something interesting out of this conversation otherwise nobody has the time to give you even 5 minutes of the day makes sense so that that's what's worked for me and uh, parents validation of course as well <laughs> i mean uh, you know just just joking about it but i think parents uh, when when they start seeing that potential in you know, when they start telling you that we're proud of you it's very difficult to get it i don't know how your family functions or you know but my punjabi family it's very difficult to get yeah. um, you know Absolutely. praises out of them they'll yeah. always say ye nahi kiya wo nahi kiya and all of that but the day they start saying we're proud of you i think then you you're doing something right you're doing something and you'll do something you'll figure something out for yourself makes sense makes sense yeah. awesome awesome right it's been a it's been a great conversation having me hack over from huddle and i say this is one of my biggest regrets in in curate that i don't get enough time for these conversations uh, i spend about 8 hours of my day talking to people uh, but this is that one two hours which i really love where i get to do just a free wheeling conversation instead of pitching or selling what we are building uh, and it's always awesome to have amazing folks over for unicorn chases at curate Uh, and the kind of insights that they share the kind of depth that they have the kind of diversity of insights that we get is absolutely amazing right uh, at curate we coming up with something very very amazing next month so next month we are getting 40 founders over uh, to rishikesh uh, when we are doing a very very select event where we'll get top investors top unicorn founders talking to founders who have just started their journey below series b uh folks who are just trying to figure it out or have figured out early days of what they're trying to build uh and within that we're hosting a 2 hour hiring session so if you are a very professional who's built out a profile on the curate community there are 200 limited seats where you get to a chance to actually virtually interact with those founders and get hired on the same day uh we'll be opening a 40 seats specially for just very specialized revenue folks to actually come over to rishikesh and interact with founders in person as well uh so something that we are doing uh, that we have done uh, for our founders in bangalore and gurgaon already with a smaller set work like a charm uh, and that's what we want to give back to the community that there are founders amazing founders coming over with smart investors and unicorn founders coming over that's one side of the play and the other side is where we're getting really smart potential revenue professionals who have really done well on the community to come and say could i be your next sdr could i be your next ae could i be your next corporate success manager right could i be your next great hire in your revenue teams right uh, and we'll keep doing this now every quarter this is one of our bigger ones that we're doing at the start of the quarter uh, we'll do something very big very very close to diwali stay tuned for that but something coming up in july close to the middle of the month if you haven't signed up the link for signing up for that should be in the newsletter or in the social media properties where you see this uh it's it's in white only uh, sort of section uh you'll go through a very very tough evaluation on what you've been up on up to on the community and then only you get a chance to pitch to the investors right uh, and obviously the founders there as well so uh that's been obviously my session here at unicorn chases at curate today absolutely a delight to have mehak over uh, as i always say this is one of the best things that i get to do as a founder of curate keep doing these sessions uh and the ramifications are you know 10x for our business uh, we have gotten amazing founders over who have gone on to become evangelists customers and more uh and at huddle obviously we are doing deeper partnerships where we are saying that all of their partners firms get exposed to what we are building at curate and all of you amazing founders out there can reach out to huddle the other way as well right uh this is me ajay sethi signing off from unicorn chases today 
but an absolute pleasure uh, mehak having you over thanks a ton for your time thanks a ton for your honest insights <laughs> absolutely a wonderful wonderful pleasure to have amazing folks over no thank you for having me like i said i think i i'm, I'm really honored to be a part of something like this and like i always said you know i've seen founders go out there gps go out there talk but there are always people sitting on the on the back end supporting them and uh, with with this conversation i think it's probably to all the people who are you know building the investor relations or building the investment side of of the of the bigger vcs i think this this one's for them so thank you for having me on board awesome thanks to 10 guys look forward to this episode on our newsletter on our community and our social media channels very very soon thanks to 10